Hello everyone. Today I am going to deal with Structuralism and Literature by Jonathan Culler. Let's see about the author. Jonathan Culler is an American literary critic. He is a professor of English and comparative literature at Cornell University. He is a leading exponent of structuralism, literary theory and criticism. His major works are Literary Theory, A Short Introduction, Structuralist Poetics, Structuralism, Linguistics and Study of Literature, The Pursuit of Science, Semiotics, Literature on Deconstruction, Theory and Criticism after Structuralism. Kala says that structuralism is not a difficult theory to understand. It is applicable to the practical study and teaching of literature. So here, literary works are the object of study. In this essay, Kala tries to explain two things. First, he explains what is structuralism and how it is relevant to the study of literature. Then he explains what is a structuralist approach to literature with some example. He says that structuralism is not a new way of interpreting literary works, but it is an attempt to understand how we get meaning out of these literary works. According to Roland Barthes, structuralism is a method for the study of cultural artifacts derived from the methods of contemporary linguistics. Color says that there are two ways of using linguistic methods in the study of literature. One is to describe in linguistic terms and the next is to take linguistics as a model. Then he talks about the basis of structuralism and semiology. Semiology means the study of signs and symbols in a language. Color says that structuralism and semiology are based on two fundamental things. They are social and cultural phenomena. They are defined by some network of relations. So these social and cultural phenomena including literature have meaning they are science. So the task of structural analysis is to understand the underlying systems of conventions which enable cultural objects to have meaning. He says that structuralism is not a method for new interpretations but it questions how the different meanings of literary works are possible. Then he talks about the structuralist perspective. Color says that the best way to achieve this perspective is to take linguistics as a model and to think of the relationship between an utterance and the speaker or hearer. In the case of literature, a structuralist poetics must inquire what knowledge must be assumed to read and understand a literary work. Then he talks about the literary competence. Say for an example, a, a poem was given to a person who knows English but who has no knowledge of the literary conventions of English will be totally confused if he was asked to interpret the poem. He or she may understand the words and sentences but may not know how to make sense out of it. What he or she lacks is a complex system of knowledge which we call literary competence. Then color stresses upon the importance of having literary competence for a reader to understand the difference between a sentence and a poem. For that he has given an example that is yesterday I went into town and bought a lamp. If this example is considered as a statement, the yesterday given here gives a direct meaning to a particular thing. But this example is considered as a poem. The yesterday stands for all possible yesterday. From this example, it is very clear that the meaning of the poem differs from the post. And it also depends upon the person who reads it. 
then he talks about new criticism cover says that in new criticism the meanings are there within the text he says that a reader or a critic should think that a poem is something like a natural self sufficient organism this attitude will lead them to approach a poem without any preconceptions and attempt to appreciate it fully what is there then he talks about how structuralism is different from new historicism unlike new historicism in structuralism a poem is not a self contained entity but it is a sequence which has meaning only in relation to a literary system or a institution of literature which guides the reader the sense of the poem's completeness is a function of the totality of the interpretive process the result of the way we have been taught to read the poem then kalak talks about the two important obstacles in the process of literary education the first obstacle is most people are interested in exercising their understanding of literature than in investigating what it involves so the critic has to produce new and subtler interpretation of literary works The next obstacle is the difficulty of determining what will count as literary competence and this obstacle will be resolved only by practice. There are a number of acceptable readings for any poem and a literary competence is a result of an interpersonal experience of reading and discussion. Kalle says that there are shared notions of how to read and both critic and audience know what counts for reading. He argues that the common basis for reading must be understood clearly and the conventions which make literature must be made more explicit. Then he talks about the artificiality of literature. Kalle says that Though literature is written in the language of information, it is not just used to give information. The language used for lyric and the latter is completely different. So, to overcome this strangeness, we have to naturalize the text and make it something of a communication. This process of naturalization is called presemblization by the French theorist. Next Kalle explains the topic premature naturalization. He says that the conventions of literature guide the process of naturalization and provide alternative to premature naturalization. Here the naturalization is taking place prematurely. To explain this he gives an example of Dunn's poem The Good Morrow. Here the poet was in bed with his mistress one morning when the sun rose and being still befilled with the dream he uttered the statement in the hope that the sun would go away and shine elsewhere it is an example for premature naturalization even the least advanced student knows that this is an inappropriate explanation the protest to the sun itself is a figure the situation of utterance of a poem is a fiction We are like to naturalize the poem as a love poem, which uses this situation as an image of energy and annoyance, and hence as a figure for a strong, self-sufficient passion. Naturalization is the process of making something intelligible by relating it to what is already known and accepted. In discussing prose fiction, Roland Bass identifies five different codes. Color takes just two by way of example. They are semi-code and symbolic code. The semi-code is the unit of signifier which creates or suggests connotation. This is a good case of literary conventions which produce intelligibility. As we go through a novel, we pick out items which refer to the behavior of characters and use them to create a character. This involves considerably semantic transformation. Symbolic code is the oddest and most difficult to discuss. 
there are a few symbols created by tradition but most potential symbols are defined by complex relations with a context say for an example the roads can lead in a variety of directions and within each of the semantic field its significance will depend on its place in an oppositional structure sun and moon can also signify almost anything provided the opposition between them is preserved color quotes a small poem at the end it is written by william carlos Williams. the poem is this is just to say i have eaten the plums that were in the ice box and which you were probably saving for breakfast forgive me they were delicious so sweet so cold the interpretation of the poem is it is written in premature naturalization the poet ate the plum and left this note of forgiveness on the table for his wife he has returned it in the worst form since he is a poet it is written in binary opposition on one side he says that it is delicious sweet and cold on the other side the priority of domestic rules about eating uh, the reading of the poem depends upon some common interpretative process and method color says that in modern poetry any common everyday statement can be a poem he says that the structuralist poetry can be hermeneutics and that's all about the explanation thank you so much for watching